Hey everybody, this is Structural Steve again, and in this video I'm going to show you how to open up old Leapridge Concrete or Leapridge Steel files inside the new OpenBridge Designer. So the old standalone file that I'm going to open up in this example is a Leapridge Concrete file, more specifically a substructure module file, otherwise known as an RCP or file. I created this file within Leapridge Concrete a few months ago for a project by going directly into that substructure module and created and designed my peer in there. Now that we're working in OpenBridge Designer, we need to get that file into an OBD file. So when you first open up OpenBridge Designer, you'll see the main menu screen like you see here. Now since all of the old standalone products like Leapridge Concrete and Leapridge Steel are contained within OBD, the first step is to open up your old standalone file product is going to be to create a new OBD file. Now, my organization stores everything on ProjectWise, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that ProjectWise icon to log into that. Uh, if you don't use ProjectWise you can, and you just store everything on a local server, you can skip this step here. Now that I'm logged in, I'm just going to go ahead and hit new file. And again, this is a little bit of a different interface here as opposed to if you were working on a local server here, but same overall concept, right? We're just going to pick the location that we want to store it to. And give it a file name. Now in my case here, this is just a peer design that I designed directly in uh, Leapridge Concrete in the, the module, the substructure module. So I'm going to name it whatever is inside the file. Another thing I like to do as well is to leave that OBDX uh, file extension name in there so that it indicates that it's an OBD file. So once the file opens up, you're going to want to go to this standalone workflow. Click on Add Standalone Group. And again, this is just all, the only thing I have in this design file is just a peer, so I'm going to go ahead and name it what it is, peer2. Click OK, and now I'm going to click on the analytics, and that's what gives me access to the analytical software. This was a Leapridge Concrete file, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Leapridge Concrete to launch that application. And you'll see it keeps OBD open in the background while opening up the new Leapridge Concrete window. And one thing you'll want to make sure you have checked and make sure it's turned off is the ProjectWise integration. That's one thing that if you do use ProjectWise in the past with standalone products and if it's turned on, it can interfere with how OBD talks with Leapridge Concrete. So I go to Options, Preferences, and then make sure that this right here is unchecked. So that's good like that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and click Open and navigate to the file that I want to open and, and import. In this case, I have this you know, Peer2 file here. I click Open. And you'll see here that the OBD file is being updated with that analytical information. So again, all those analytical files, you know, Leverage Concrete, Leverage Steel, they all get stored in that OBDX file now. So you're going to get an update that says that that file has been kind of added or imported into that OBD file. So this looks good. Everything's in there now. All I, can, all I have to do is hit save. And then you see again it's updated on here. The main OBDX file is updated. And I'm just going to go ahead and close out of the substructure module and the main Leapridge Concrete module here. And again, you see that notification that it was updated, and you see now you have a blue ring around Leapridge Concrete when this file is highlighted, meaning that I could launch and open that file. You also see a file size associated over here, and then you see the file in the, the tree structure over here. So now you know that that file has been imported into your you know, OBDX file up here. Now if you wanted to add um, another file, so say in my case, I have you know, multiple runs for this because I needed to you know, isolate service three stresses for you know to meet a Florida requirement. I can click on that standalone group again, and then click on Leapridge Concrete, and that'll just open up a, a blank or new file for Leapridge Concrete again, just like we did before. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit open, and then I'm going to go import my service three run here. Click open. And now I have my service three running here, 
and I can just go ahead and hit save. Close out the substructure module, close out LibreJ Concrete. And again, you're getting notifications that the OBDX file is updated. And now I see both those models in this file here. So it's kind of nice. You can you can save multiple runs or multiple files within an OBDX file. One thing to be careful with, though, you know, these files can get big. You know, this one here was a 40 meg file. So you know, if you have a bridge with 10 peers and multiple runs on each peer, you know, this OBDX file can get quite large. So you're going to want to kind of think about how you um, divide up your peers and your designs so that your file size is, is more manageable and you can work with uh, different files and different people at the same time. Now that I have all my old files in there, I can go ahead and just close out the OBD file. And you'll notice there's not a save button, so you, there's no need to save anything. It's a live database file, right? That's why we were seeing that blue window pop open every time we did something. It was saving it live. So in my case here, you know, I stored mine on ProjectWise. If you were saving it on the server, you could just close it out and you'd be done. But I have mine on ProjectWise, so I'm going to close this and then check it back into my ProjectWise. And that's it. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give the channel a like, or share the video with others. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section, and I'll do my best to answer them. See you guys in the next video.